Uh, this is a, l a little bit of a taste of some data that we've been uh, running at the Oxford Internet Institute. Uh, I'm, a, um, I'm a researcher there and we're looking at a, a cross-national study of internet-enabled couples and their relationship practices. So nothing says love like bar charts. Uh, so I, I think you'd, uh, in which case, <laughs> if that's the case, then you came to the right place. Uh, Part of what we're doing with this uh, early report that we've released is uh, getting an assessment of the state of play for online dating and online relationships. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, there were tabloid stories, I found a lover online. And nowadays, uh, you know, since uh, social network software and uh, all sorts of uh, dating software, Match.com, uh, eHarmony, it's become a little more broadly diffused, but there are still uh, stigmas and also still myths about this. So I'm uh, going to play a bit of a myth buster this afternoon and perhaps validate some, uh, some couples who might have been online. Uh, so this might be uh, some people's uh, notions of uh, the, the best match for, uh, for, your, for your online, who's your, the suitor that's waiting for you. Uh, now this is, a, this is a classic and uh, well, uh, well diffused picture of uh, uh, some, some poor chap on the internet. But, uh, and, then, of course, we, further on, we, we start to concern ourselves with the issues of authenticity in the online world. Are we actually even uh, uh, interacting with real people in real spaces? Uh, the, the classic cartoon from The New Yorker uh, is, uh, on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. But, of course, now if you're a dog on Dog Book and you have a bunch of dog friends and your favorite food is Purina, chances are people now do know you're a dog. And so in the, in the intervening years, it, it seems that this notion has, um, uh, has sort of diffused, uh, authenticity has risen, and people now are using uh, online dating sites rather, uh, rather substantially. So uh, we did a survey of internet-enabled couples in uh, 18 countries. Uh, this is a survey where we asked both individuals to fill out, uh, fill out the survey, and it was um, uh, about 1,000 people per uh, country, so we have about 12,000 uh, responses. And in the last uh, five years, interestingly, 25% of the couples, the new couples in this study, uh, met online. Uh, online dating sites are still the most popular way that people meet online, um, although there were lots of other ways through Facebook, chat rooms, forums, gaming, and so forth. And a majority of people uh, now actually know somebody who has met, uh, their, um, met a, uh, a partner or met and had a relationship online. So this line's uh, perhaps a little tiny. You can see a sort of a gentle, gradual slope coming up from 1997. That's around the time that we started getting databases and ways to sort of pivot and search and say, I want to find someone who's, uh, I don't know, six foot five, loves opera, um, eats jelly beans, and so forth, and you know, going to the right place, I can, I can find that person. So to zoom in on that, this is what it looks like, um, uh, looks like nowadays. In the past 10 years, this line has steadily risen to about 30%. So these are, um, uh, these are the percentage of couples in our study by the year that they uh, started their relationship. And certainly most recently these couples, um, uh, over 30% of them have, been, uh, have started online. So how does Britain compare in this study to give you a sense of the, first the countries that are in here and the number of people who um, met their spouses or partners online? These are uh, the percentage of people in a current relationship where the relationship started uh, since 1997. That was that when that started to, when that trend started to increase. And Britain is right in the middle there. So about 22% of people uh, in our sample of those who started in the, I guess the last 14 years, since 1997, um, who, uh, who had their, who started their relationship online. Now, while Britain does uh, tend to be relatively in the middle here in terms of the number of people who um, start the relationships online, uh, the British tend to be a bit um, mum about this. Uh, they're not as likely to mention this to other people, uh, not as quiet as uh, uh, the, the Japanese or the Germans. Uh, what's sort of um, odd about this, if you'll notice, Germany is very mum about this, returning to this earlier chart. Uh, since 1997, 30% of couples uh, started online but uh, they're keeping it to themselves, <laughs> and uh, they're way over on the other side. So 
why do I, why do I mention this? Why, and this is, um, this is the percentage of people who know someone who was in a relationship online. Um, I mention this because what we've found that's very interesting is that online dating is an experience technology. It's an example of a technology where if you have some experience with it, good or bad, it tends to lead to positive sentiments. This is the same for uh, online banking or online shopping, where if you're not into it, it's very difficult to persuade someone and they're like, oh, I'm gonna get viruses and the goblins will jump out of my computer and so forth, or a stalker will meet me um, and he won't be very attractive. So. Uh, but now uh, those people who simply tried online dating tend to uh, agree that it's a, a good way to meet people and tend to believe that their friends are comfortable with it. Uh, and while those who have their current partner who they met online tend to be very positive about this, the real, the real fulcrum, the real pivot is between those who've tried and those who haven't, which is why we talk about it as a, as a technology of experience and of exposure. And we have a similar story for values. Those people who've tried or have had some sort of experience with it tend to feel very positive about it, whereas those who haven't tend to be very reluctant and skeptical. This is a one-shot survey, so what we can't do is uh, look at, uh, we can't look at this change over time. I can't say which one caused which, the chicken and egg story here, um, but it does seem to be relatively persuasive that mere exposure to online tends to be related to positive sentiments. But what, what's interesting is that this is a story about online, um, uh, about online dating and about dating broadly. Uh, now, I'm from, uh, I'm from North America, I'm from Canada. Uh, dating, like job interviews, is a very common part of uh, life there. And I mention that because uh, over here I've, uh, I've heard that uh, dating is not itself a necessarily broadly diffused concept. You know, you go out to someone, you give them your likes, your interests, your resume, they tick off the boxes, and if it, if it all works out at the end, you get a second job interview, and hopefully at some point uh, you meet the parents. Uh, but, uh, no, instead, it, uh, dating isn't actually that serious, uh, thank, thankfully. But what we thought was that there'd be a substitution effect, that what we would see is that since 1997, as online dating rose, personals would go down, and meeting through friends of friends would go down. And it turns out those are the things that are not going down. Those things are also, they've also increased uh, since online dating started to rise. But what did decrease was meeting people through family and through hobby groups and through, um, through church groups. And these are sort of these broad group-based activities. And in their place, what we see rising are these, uh, these activities that are just very one-on-one, -on -one, very personable. And the idea that I'm going to be an individual meeting uh, another individual and then hopefully start a relationship with them is the, is the kernel, is the basis behind which online dating uh, resides. And so that is what seems to be on the rise as much as online dating itself. Now finally, uh, the last thing I just wanted to mention and asking about who is doing this, well, is it just because uh, young people are uh, more interested in computers, more savvy? Is that, why, is that why online dating is on the rise? Because they're dating online. Well, of course, younger people are um, more likely to be single and therefore more likely to be a potential candidate for online dating. So when we look at the ages of the people who started a relationship, um, the percentage of those who did it online, you see obviously that it's, it's young people. 25% of those in their 20s uh, in our sample uh, started their relationship uh, online and uh, uh, about 18% of those in the 30s started it online. But when we look at the age when the relationship started, a different picture emerges. Older people uh, tend not to um, be single, but of those who are single and are starting a relationship, they are the ones who are more likely to be using online dating than the young. And very interestingly, almost 40% of the people who started a relationship since 1997, almost 40% of those in the age 40 and above did so online. So the online world seems to be uh, an accessible, useful way in order to meet somebody individually one-on-one, -on -one, and especially for those uh, who, um, who, um, uh, who are older. So just to summarize, you know, online dating has been, uh, has been on the rise. People who have experience with it seem to hold it in higher regard. And as this practice has diffused, uh, it's become popular, and less about the myths of these uh, poor internet nerds, and more, uh, uh, more about individuals uh, sort of meeting this and using this as a way to meet individuals uh, in addition to other practices. And it's popular among the young and very useful for those over 40. Um, and so just some, uh, some uh, deep thoughts about this, if I could 
<laughs> if I could try to find some, I would, but in lieu of those, there's some up here. Um, what the online world does is make things findable. It makes people findable. It makes information findable. And so this is certainly working for people trying to uh, find relationships. So I'll just uh, end it there, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.